In this video, I'm going to look at uh, the usefulness uh, of transformations in the context of uh, regression analysis. So I'm going to look at a couple of different examples. This first one concerns a study to see if there's a, an association between the uh, number of pollen grains uh, and the floral tube length of an iris species. And so if I fit a simple linear regression model with grains deposited as the response variable and tube length as the predictor variable, and then I look at a residual scatter plot, I can see that there's a bit of a problem. Remember that a residual scatter plot should have the following features, a roughly symmetric cloud of points above and below the horizontal line at zero, little noticeable curvature as we move from left to right along the x-axis, and approximately equal variance of points above and below the line at all values of x. And it's that last feature that this residual scatter plot does not have. As the floral tube length increases, the variability of the residuals increases as well, and that's not what we want. We want the variability of the residuals to stay constant all the way across. So this type of residual scatter plot suggests transforming the response variable. Um, often a good place to start is with a, a logarithmic transformation of the response variable, uh, but sometimes that can actually be a bit too strong. And so uh, a similar type of transformation that's not quite as strong is the square root transformation. And so let's try that in this case. So I'll transform the response variable and then I'll fit a new model with the transformed response variable. And then let's look at the residual scatter plot for that model. And this is much more like it. This does have the features that we would like to see in a residual scatter plot roughly symmetric cloud of points above and below the horizontal line at zero, little noticeable curvature as we move from left to right along the x-axis, and approximately equal variance of points above and below the line at all values of x. Uh, the other assumption that we need to check with a linear regression model is normality. So one way to assess normality visually is with a normal quantile plot, also known as a QQ plot, or a normal probability plot. So this plot we want to make it square, and then we can draw the QQ plot, and then draw the, the line, the diagonal line through the points, and ideally the points should line up with the line approximately, and they, they do in this case. This is, this is about as good as you, you're ever going to see for a QQ plot. So I don't have any real doubts about normality in this case. Let's take a, a look at another example now. So this one is to do with the relationship between the number of plant species present in ponds and the pond productivity. So we'll load the data and Let's fit a simple linear regression model with number of species as the response variable and productivity as the predictor variable. And let's just look at a scatter plot of the data with the simple linear regression line going through the data. And we'll see immediately that there's an issue here. So here's the data. There's, there's, there's a relationship apparent in the data, but it looks like the trend is increasing in this part of the graph and then maybe reaches a plateau and then levels off and then maybe maybe even comes down, maybe comes down at the end. Um, this straight simple linear regression line is just not picking up that, that curved trend at all. So what we can try here is something called a quadratic regression model. And this is actually a type of multiple linear regression because what we end up doing is we create the square of the predictor variable and then we fit a model with species as the response variable and then two predictors 
productivity and the square of productivity. And so this gives rise to a quadratic model. And if we summarize that, we can see that we have a row for the intercept term, a row for the productivity term, and a row for the productivity squared term. And if we look at the p-value for the squared term, we can see that it's less than 0 0.05. And what that tells us is that having this term in the model is worthwhile. If I was to fit this model and I, I was to get a, a large p-value here, then that might tell me that uh, I don't really have strong enough evidence to have that square term in the model. But in this case, I do have a significant p-value, so I am going to keep it in the model. And then if I recreate this plot, but instead put the quadratic equation on here, the quadratic curve, you'll see that it picks up the trend in the data quite nicely. So that's a couple of examples of using transformations in regression. In the first example, we transformed the response variable and instead of using y for the response variable, we used the square root of y for the response variable. Uh, and that still fit within the simple linear regression model framework. Uh, and in the second example, we used uh, as predictors um, x and x squared, and that's uh, known as a quadratic model, and it's actually uh, an example of a multiple linear regression model. So we're nearly finished with the series of videos for this lesson. Uh, we've got one more to do, and so in the next video we're going to look at logistic regress regression.